Wow. 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 Now, when it, 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 this article definitely had me thinking, God must have tapped me on the shoulder because I got to say, about four days ago, I had a video on my list that I didn't feel right about making them. You know, I think it was something along the lines of, does Tyler Perry have another haves and have nots in him? Or the title will be, will Tyler Perry ever do better? Just in regards of talking about his current shows on television and how, you know, people constantly ask me, Jeremy, do you think The Oval? Do you think Sisters? Do you think this show? Do you think that show holds a candle to the peak of the haves and the have nots? And I did a video, what was it, about one or two weeks ago about The Oval. You know, if The Oval... Um, so far has reached peak haves and have nots and that's a certainly a no and I feel like I did a video or videos on the subject of does he have any other haves and have nots in him will Tyler Perry do better ever do better I feel like I've done those already a few months ago and I just said you know what because when I think about you know like uh uh uh, Vaughn Hebron, aka Barry from the Oval, and how November is going to be a big month for him with the reboot of the game, the King Richard film he's in. I'm like, that's really the thing. Like, the thing about Tyler Perry Studios, regardless if the product, the shows and movies, are peak entertainment or quality entertainment, is one thing. But his real purpose is about the opportunity he's giving to actors who may not have that shine in Hollywood or it's a chance for somebody to show their skills to hopefully get another job on another, you know, film lot. So I didn't feel right about doing the video because even as even if I came as respectfully as possible, I feel like I was, you know, kind of attacking Tyler Perry when I didn't really want to do that. Now, trust and believe, I've had videos where I made it plain and clear that, you know, he kind of made it sound like those who question the quality of the work aren't his audience. And I'm like, well, dang, I felt like that was sticking it to me. Uh, but that was an article in itself a while ago. But I actually received a link to the Hollywood Reporter and... The title is Tyler Perry is ready to cede some control, a.k.a. Tyler Perry is ready to give up some of the control at Tyler Perry Studios. And this floored me. Now, when I say floored me, I mean, like, I really was like, I can't believe what I'm reading now. You know, he's talked about how there are upcoming shows. There are some current shows and projects where he's not doing everything himself he's getting other writers he's getting other directors and i've said it like a thousand times already like the current seasons of house of pain assisted living there are other people behind the camera there are other people writing the episodes but this look as always i will leave a link to the full article and i think that uh at the bottom of the article itself it says hey um we cut this for clarity and length if you want to check out the full thing get a copy of The Hollywood Reporter. I will try to get my hands on a copy because this is insane. So there's just so much to cover in this. Trust and believe. I'll do, I'll, I'll cover the the, the big the big parts. This, this is something else. So guys, if you're a person who has just been constantly, Tyler Perry needs to write his room, Tyler Perry needs this, please don't only just pay attention to what I say in the video, but read the article for yourself because it's happening. So before going forward in the video, please take a moment to hit the thumbs up button to show you like it. Hit that subscribe button as we get closer to 190,000 subscribers. Follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. And hit the bell icon and select all. That way you notify or get notified, excuse me, whenever our kind of entertainment posts this content to the channel. So, whew, okay. The article dropped November 1st today. Now, during the interview, it was mentioned that I believe this year is the studio's 15th anniversary, which comes two years after the grand opening back in 2019. Uh, production is so, you know, things are just moving so quickly at Tyler Perry Studios that they've booked 
They've been, they're book solid for the next few years. Perry said that pulling back a bit will only be in the service of even more growth. Holy crap. I mean, this first paragraph in itself. So the interview is taking place in one of the 12 sound stages at the studios. And currently he's seven shows and counting with Viacom, CBS. It's not unusual for him to bang out a full 25 episode season in fewer than three weeks, which is we, we know. Like when the cast come down to film a show of maybe 18 to 25 episodes, it's done in a matter of t- three, sometimes two weeks. And you know how Tyler Perry films. So he's talking about the fact that he's kind of handing over the reins now. The article is broken, or the interview is broken up into so many different questions. But to give you a timetable, the first question is, you're someone who can film a season of television faster than anyone else who's currently working. So is it safe to assume you've had a busy day? He says, I just finished directing for half of the day. We're in season three of my show, Bruh. I usually take the rest of the year off after a season. But because they're burning them up on BET, we had to re-up early this year. So I think that could be in reference to um, this interview taking place during the filming of Bruh Season 3, which wasn't too long ago. And to be honest, you know, I remember saying, I've been saying this in all my Bruh videos, like I wish we had more than one episode a week after we get, you know, the first few episodes of the season premiere and mid-season premiere. But, um... I don't think that's happening anytime soon. So the next statement was, you are the volume guy. And here's the thing. He says, I'm the volume guy for about three or four more years. My plan is to relinquish to a lot more writers, a lot more directors to take over a lot of the shows that I've started. So yeah, for sure. So basically, what what is it? 2021. So I want to say around the middle of the decade, 2024, 2025, maybe even 2026, depending on how Tyler Perry feels. A lot of projects aren't just going to be him. He's going to, you know, kind of take more of a role overseeing things than doing hands-on work. I'm going to be completely honest here. I don't see the Oval or Sisters lasting for another three or four more years. But then again, the same has been said for like the haves and the have nots of loving you was wrong. Would I want the shows to last that long? Hell no. Just <laughs> I'm sorry, because if the shows just continue to do the same thing over and over again, come on now. But I will say that it's very interesting that he even mentioned some of the current shows and projects we're watching now, he can actually hand the reins over. So, I, I, I again, I'm not trying to give anybody false hope, but I remember towards the end of the haves and the have-nots, and, you know, when you go back to, like, the Sisters After Show, he said, you know, like, don't you, shouldn't you trust that I know what I'm doing, that I have a purpose in the way I write? That almost made it clear that it's like, this guy is never going to hand over the reins on the big shows, like House of Pain, Assisted Living, uh, maybe some of his BET Plus shows, like, he'll let other people do that stuff, Young Dylan. But when it comes to, like, the high-rating bangers, like the Oval and Sisters, he's always going to do it. But if those shows were to last until the next three or four more years, then there's a chance that there will be other people working on those projects. So, that's interesting. Now, the interviewer says, you famously don't have a writer's room. What does relinquishing look like for somebody with that much creative control? Like I said before, he's going to be taking more of a role overseeing projects and doing hands-on work. For the past six weeks, I was in the mountains. I wrote 72 episodes of television, just me in a room by myself, sitting out there, looking at the moose in the mountains. Now, remember when he went viral for the moose photos? So he was in the mountains for six weeks, so a month and a half. Um, Every morning after I work out, I start writing at 7. I don't finish until 7 in the evening. I do that every day until it's done. I love it, and I love directing for 12 or 15 hour days. But I realize there's so much more that I could be doing if I were to hand some of the other stuff off rather than doing it all myself. This is a big deal, guys. 
All right. Um, uh, there's a section about writer's block, but he talks about how he doesn't get it. It all comes from childhood and my pain and my abuse. I was able to disassociate and go into another world and see all these beautiful places in my mind. When I'm writing a script, I access that place and I can create those worlds pretty easily. I'm sure psychologists could tell you what that is, but I just don't know. Now, uh, there's a moment, uh, a section where it talks about how in 2019, the new studio opening got a lot of people in Hollywood to recognize all you've accomplished. Do you think your relationship with that town has changed? He says, it's never been a goal. Same with like the Oscars, the Walk of Fame, the Emmys. That was never his goal, but he was moved and thankful by the awards he's received over the last couple of years. And, um... I'm really only trying to hit the beats of this article that are in relation to relinquishing the power. But he goes on to talk about, you know, uh, refusing hate, his speech at the Oscars, the thing about living in Georgia. And um, they talk a bit about the Rona and the shots and whatnot. There's really not a need to go into that. And yeah. <laughs> He talks about the Jazz Man's Blues and the new and the next Medea movie coming up. So they're going to be on Netflix. And towards the end, he talks about how he's a producer, not a director, on the new Sister Act three movie. Tim Federlot Ferdini, I can't pronounce the name, but he's the director. Whoopi's really excited. I think that this is just what the country needs. We need that feel-good moment in the movies where you go, oh my God, I love their singing. That's my hope. Now, he also mentioned another project. I just wrote a new show. I wrote it over the weekend, 10 episodes. We start shooting it next month. I'm just ready to go, man. Now, when he says the weekend, I'm guessing that assumes is right to assume he didn't write this with the 72 other episodes of television that he wrote when he was in the wilderness in the cabin. So I think when he was out at the cabin, when he says 72 episodes, that's probably the equivalent of three seasons of, you know, other shows like uh, maybe the Oval season four, possibly sister season four, considering they just filmed that. And, um, I don't know, maybe something like Ruthless. I honestly don't know. But in terms of a new, new show, I wonder if this is the Mabel series on, um, Showtime, right? Isn't this supposed to be on Showtime? Look, I remember doing the articles on it and I kept saying that the thing I'm most excited to know is who's going to be playing Mabel in that series because it's about a Medea, if I'm remember correctly in her 20s so i don't know we haven't heard jack squat about that in a while but we'll just have to wait and see but regardless uh, yeah like i said please make sure you read the entire article on the hollywood reporter website i will leave the link below but I i'm just shocked guys that uh, it's really happening like i said i knew that slowly but surely it was happening but it looks like Tyler Perry has decided, you know, I may, maybe though, maybe those six weeks in the, uh, you know, um, in the woods was kind of what he needed, or the mountains, the mountains was what he needed to just kind of reflect and realize, you know, what, well, all the stuff I'm doing, if I, you know, it, it's almost kind of like a expanding his circle of trust that he's leaving the studio in good hands and I think that's great because it allows for a lot of variety so for all the people like you know what you always talk about the shows if you if you think you can write better why don't you well I'm not well technically I was a screenwriter for a little bit I took a class I've done you know stuff for college back in the day like um came up with storyboards and whatnot for like video ideas and now i'm a full-time youtuber uh but it's just like one of those things where if you are an upcoming writer and director then there's hope for you at tyler perry studios guys it really is hope i don't think that's ever going to happen for me and that's not me being negative it's just like kind of like tyler never searching for the accolades of hollywood and whatnot but he's getting recognized like the emmys and the oscars is great same thing with me and Tyler Perry Studios to work there. It's like, you know, I'm just reviewing shows. I mean, if it happens, it happens. But it's good to know that if you are 
studying to be in the business, then Tyler Perry Studios might be the place that you can get your start. And even if it's not the place you stay forever, being able to work there and come out successful could lead to even bigger projects in Hollywood. So you never know. But yeah, um, guys, yeah, this is a big deal. Tyler Perry has officially announced that he will be relinquishing some control. And I know that it's on a smaller scale, but it reminds me of Kev on Stage Studios and, you know, the Kev on Stage app and how he was just an internet comedian who goes on tour doing stand-up. He has Kev on Stage Studios. He has the app where he's creating opportunity for other comedians to, you know, showcase their talent. And I just remember before he really blew up, you know, before Here's the Thing, before Righteous and Ratchet was really a big deal, he was doing the funny videos and now... I'm not saying he doesn't do them anymore because he posts his annual November 1st video that, you know, Christmas is here. It's officially the season. Like, I remember just constantly going to him for those small bits of content. But now he is just doing a lot. And, like, I remember he said himself one time that you it will get to the point where you're not going to see me in a lot of vi my own content or all death videos. This was prior to great taste, you know, being the final episode but he just mentioned that he's going to take more of a behind the scenes approach and allow other people to showcase their talent in front of the camera which is great so it looks like tyler perry is doing the same thing where we're definitely going to see tyler perry doing more but not necessarily doing everything himself he's probably going to take more time for himself you know for his son possibly you know pursue other roles in films that don't have him at Tyler Perry Studios but you know working on other projects but yeah this is just great stuff all around and uh yeah that's all I have for this particular video this is some uh interesting interesting developments so make sure you read the full article I know I said it like six times but trust and believe this article is worth the read from start to finish what upcoming projects are you excited to see come out of Tyler Perry Studios what do you think the 10 episodes of the new show he was referencing about? Like I said, there are plenty of movies and shows and projects that Tyler Perry probably has that I have no clue what the heck they're about because I haven't heard of them. But yeah, with that being said, like and subscribe. And if you want to donate to the channel, feel free to do so on PayPal or Cash App. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next video.